Welcome to Immigration Q&A with Attorney Esti. I'm Attorney Esti Esteran Bisnar. I'm licensed to practice law in California, New York, and Philippines. In this segment, I will answer one or two questions about U.S. immigration law. So if you have questions, feel free to email me at attorneyesti at asuronbisnarlaw.com and I will do my best to answer your questions through this segment. Now, let's get started with the questions. My name is Lina Senatin Partosa, and I have a question for you, Attorney Esti. A friend of mine is a green card holder and have stayed in the Philippines for more than two years now. Can she still use her green card if she decides to return to the U.S.? Or does she have any other options? Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Lina Portosa, for your question. Well, once you get your legal permanent resident card, otherwise known as green card, you are expected to make the United States as your permanent residence. So remember, if you have been absent for the U.S. for more than one year, you will be found to have abandoned your permanent resident status. So my tip for you, if you expect to be out of the United States for more than one year, I recommend that you apply for a re-entry permit on Form 131. Applying for a re-entry permit prior to leaving the U.S. will allow you to stay outside the U.S. for more than one year to up to two years. This is the practice of some green card holders who need to work abroad or to finish their studies abroad. The permit is good for two years, which can be renewed. Now, if Ms. Partosa's friend did not apply for a re-entry permit, she may be eligible for a returning resident immigrant visa or SB1. She can apply for a returning resident visa at the nearest U.S. Embassy or consulate abroad. When applying for a returning resident visa, she should submit a completed application form, DS-117, her permanent resident card, her re-entry permit if she has one. She must also submit supporting documents that show the following. Dates of uh, travel outside of the United States, for example, airline tickets, passport stamps, etc. Plus, this is very important, proof of her ties to the United States and her intention to return, example, tax returns and evidence of economic, family, and social ties to the United States, proof that her protracted stay outside of the United States was for reasons beyond her control. So basically, she will have to go through the regular consular processing with application online, medical exam, and interview. Now, if her SB1 application is denied, then she has to go through the permanent residence process again. She may have to reapply for an immigrant visa under the same category by which she immigrated originally. This means back to square one. Our next question is from an email I received from Ms. May D, which reads, Attorney SD, my friend's sister, a U.S. citizen, died here in the U.S. and there is a pending petition in favor of her husband. Will her husband still be able to adjust his status in the U.S.? Thank you for your email, Ms. May D. Last episode, I answered a question about the mother who petitioned her child and the mother petitioner died. If you missed that episode, you can check out my YouTube channel, Immigration Q&A Episode 1. So this time it is about the petition of a U.S. citizen wife in favor of her spouse and the wife died. So this is a petition by a spouse in favor of the other spouse. These are the rules. If there is already a pending I-130 petition or an adjustment of status concurrently filed with the I-130 petition, but there is no decision yet at the time of the spouse's death, USCIS will still proceed adjudicating that case, even if the petitioner's spouse died. USCIS will still rule on this pending petition. But take note that the husband will still have to satisfy all other eligibility requirements. One of these requirements is proving that they entered into marriage in good faith. Also, he must prove that they were still married at the time of her death not separated or divorced. Now, for additional information, what if the deceased, the deceased wife had not filed a visa petition for her husband? If the wife died without having filed any petition for her husband, the husband can self-petition as a widow, which is a, a different set of paperwork. 
This is what we call the I-360 petition. There are several requirements for this kind of petition. First, that the spouses must not have been divorced or legally separated at the time of the spouse's death. Second, and this is very important, this I-360 petition is time sensitive. The husband must file this petition within two years from the date the spouse died. To summarize, if your U.S. citizen spouse died, you may still be able to get your green card through the pending petition filed before your husband's death or through your own filing of a, an I-360 petition, a self-petition in case your spouse failed to file a petition before her death. Okay, that's it for now. Please remember, this segment is to provide information and general views about U.S. immigration law. This segment is not intended to provide specific legal advice. Every case is different and so it is always advisable to consult an immigration attorney. For free consultation, you can email me at attorneyst at asironbusinerlaw.com or visit my website at www.asironbusinerlaw.com. You can also check out my YouTube channel, Attorney SD channel, and Facebook page at Attorney SD. See you in the next episode of Immigration Q&A with Attorney SD here at Spotlight TV at LA Channel 18. Bye!